praise the living Jesus. Let us pray. Everlasting Father in heaven, excellent Jehovah, we bless and magnify your name because you are a gracious God. Take all the glory and all the adoration, mighty one. Father, as we've gathered at your feet to hear from you, teach us and touch our hearts to be very receptive, to hear, to receive, to keep, and to do according to your will. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. You're welcome to Sunday School today. Last week, we began a series on spiritual gifts. And we treated understanding spiritual gifts. We read from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 to 7. And we saw in the memory verse in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 1, we said, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. This was what Apostle Paul said. Now, what are spiritual gifts? Or what is a spiritual gift? A spiritual gift is a special divine empowerment bestowed on a believer by the Holy Spirit to accomplish a given ministry. The Bible makes it clear that every genuine Christian is given spiritual gifts according to the Lord's choice. The Lord chooses at the inception when you receive Christ what he will plant in you that will germinate and become something great in your life later as you begin to grow spiritually. Now, spiritual gifts can be given to us at salvation or cultivated through our work with God. Praise the living Jesus. And last week we saw two outlines. The first outline was a list of spiritual gifts. And we saw from the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 3 to 8, that this list includes prophecy, service, teaching, exhorting, generosity, leadership, and showing mercy. There were aspects of this spiritual gift. These were the aspects of these spiritual gifts that we treated in the first outline last week. In the second outline, we saw talents and spiritual gifts compared. We saw that in looking at the similarities of these spiritual gifts, both are gifts from God. That is the first thing to note. Both are gifts from God. The second thing is that when you receive or we receive these, these gifts, they grow in effectiveness as we continue to use them. As you continue to use a particular gift or gifts that you receive from God through the power of the Holy Spirit, they become more effective, not to you alone, but also to others. Remember, when God gives you spiritual gifts, he's not giving you just for yourself. He's giving you to use it for his purposes to mankind. Praise the Lord. We also saw that spiritual gifts are intended to be used on behalf of others and not for selfish purposes. Therefore, woe betide anyone that will receive a free gift from God and will keep it unto himself. That is why when we become believers and God blesses us with these gifts, we just be, have to begin to walk with him. Because these gifts are not just for keeping sick. Praise the Lord. And we also saw, looked at differences between talents and spiritual gifts. And we discovered that natural talents are physical abilities to do special things. Physical abilities to do special things. We can see that some people are born naturally talented in playing football. Some are born naturally talented in singing. Praise the Lord. Some are born with the natural talent of acting. Now, a person is given a natural talent as a result of a combination of genes. We saw it, and we can see that from the examples I've given. Spiritual gifts are given to all believers by the Holy Spirit. We say all because once you are a true and sincere and genuine believer, God plants in you a gift. 
Praise the Lord. We also saw that a talent can be possessed by anyone. A talent can be possessed by anyone. Whether you are a Christian or a non-Christian, a believer or a non-believer. But we saw distinctively that spiritual gifts are only possessed by believers in Christ. That is what we saw. Praise the Lord. And finally, we saw that when you are blessed with a natural talent, it will be a blessing and a plus for you, an addition for your life. If you apply those natural talents for them to be used to the glorification of God. Probably you are blessed with a wonderful voice. What do you do? Sing for Jesus. Praise the Lord. Today, we are still looking at spiritual gifts, how to identify and use them. How to identify and use spiritual gifts. So let us pray this short prayer. Father, grant me the grace to identify and utilize your gifts in me. Let's pray again. Father, grant me the grace to identify and utilize your gifts in me. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. The Lord will help us to identify and utilize every gift he gives to us to the glorification of his name in the mighty name of Jesus. So let us consider our Bible passage for today. In the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 6 to 8. Romans chapter 12, verse 6 to 8. Romans 12, verse 6 says, Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministry. He who teaches in teaching. Verse 8. He who exhorts in exhortation. He who gives with liberality. He who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Praise the living Jesus. From what, where we have just read in the scriptures, we can see about seven things in action here. The first one, that part of scripture says prophecy. If you are blessed with the gift of prophecy, always prophesy according to the proportion of faith. That is in verse, from verse 6. But when you come down to verse 7a, we see that ministry, if you are blessed with a gift of ministry, use it well in ministering the word of God. Praise the Lord. If you are blessed with teaching, don't shy from it. Be a teacher for God. Teach for God. Many people think when they are working in the church or in the assembly of believers, they think they are suffering or they think they are working for the pastor or the leadership of the church. No. When you work in the assembly or for the assembly of the children of God, you are working for God. And believe me, when you work for God, you will always receive a reward. Hallelujah. If you are blessed with the gift of exhort exhortation, what does exhortation mean? You incite, encourage people by the word of God, encourage others to do good deeds. If that is your gift, always to encourage people, that is what we mean by exhortation. Every time you are inciting and encouraging brethren to do the right thing, then let that ministry, let that gift be a gift that you will always exercise. If it is the ministry or the gift of giving, maybe you are someone God has laid in your heart, that is your nature. Many people say it is their nature. I've met some people who say their nature is to help others. Praise the living Jesus. Now, when you are blessed with such a wonderful nature, like we were talking about talents last week, that nature is a particular gift which will be made more so when we become a child of God. And in giving, you are admonished, advised, and counseled to give with liberality, to give willingly, to give joyfully. Praise the living Jesus. 
And we also saw that if you receive the gift of leadership, you must perform your duties as a leader with diligence, selflessly and purposefully. Because leadership is a blessing upon the leader. It is a blessing upon the leader. You can imagine so many people who are living in the world or in a particular congregation, in a particular church, but it is you who has been appointed to work for God or to be a leader in this particular area. You must do it with diligence. You must do it selfishly. And you must do it purposefully. If you are one who has been blessed with the gift of mercy, someone who shows mercy, you must do it with cheerfulness and empathy as you feel for others. So the Lord will feel for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, let us look at something else here. We can see that it is commendable for God's children to desire to know the spiritual gifts given to them by the Holy Spirit for the purpose of service in the church and to the glorification of God in the world. We can see that in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. The, existing of, the existence of a gift is a call to exercise it, which means if you are blessed with any gift, the most important thing for you to do is that you must exercise it. If you allow it to be dormant, it is like you are defeating the purpose of God in your life, and that will not be so in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14, Apostle Paul advised Timothy thus, neglect not the gift that is in you. Now remember, Paul was mentoring Timothy as a young man. And he said, do not neglect that gift that is in you. Because Paul knew that Timothy was blessed with the gifts of the Spirit. He saw it. Why? How did he see it? He knew that this young man had received Christ. And we can see from the introduction at the beginning, the moment you become a believer, God blesses you with a gift. Praise the living Jesus. Now, let us look at two outlines today. Two outlines. Two outlines. The first outline is identifying your spiritual giftedness. Identify your spiritual giftedness. How can you identify your spiritual giftedness? We can achieve this using the following ways. Number one, effective fervent prayer. What do we mean by effective fervent prayer? Effective fervent prayer means that prayer that is continuous, that prayer that is purposeful, that prayer that is strong, that prayer that is unstoppable, with a mind, with a will, that what you are praying for, you are going to receive. Now, effective fervent prayers is very, very vital because the one who knows exactly how you are spiritually gifted is the giver, the gift giver himself, which is the Holy Spirit. Praise the living Jesus. The Holy Spirit knows, praise the Lord, that we need these gifts and he is the one that gives them. By the time you begin to pray non-stop, your prayer reaches to the heavens and the Holy Spirit is there to release those gifts to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, you can ask the Holy Spirit to show you how you are gifted in order to better, your, to better use your spiritual gifts for his glory. Let's look at Luke chapter 11, verse 9. Let us consider Luke 11, verse 9. And we'll see what the scriptures are saying here. The scriptures are saying. Luke 11, verse 9. Verse 9 says, So I say to you, Verse 9 says, So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. If you are using your Bible there, and your Bible is a Bible that is marked in red, 
Those places that are marked in red are the places where Jesus himself spoke. Now we know that Jesus is the prince and the God of truth. And if he says, knock, and the door will be opened, seek and you will find. Ask and it shall be given unto you. What is there to stop us? What is there to stop us from, from receiving when we pray and ask the Holy Spirit sincerely to bless us with some of these gifts? Praise the Lord. From that very look, 11 verse 9, let's look at verse 13. Verse 13 of that very chapter. Verse 13 says, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your own children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Praise the Lord. As humans, when our children need anything from us, we are ready to give them. In fact, some parents will go to any length to get whatever their children have requested from them. Praise the Lord. And so Jesus himself here was saying that you who are evil, if you know how to take care of your own children, how much more the Holy Spirit? When you ask, it means you must receive. Praise the living Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. Now, the second aspect of identifying your spiritual giftedness, apart from effective, fervent prayers, is confirmation from others. Confirmation from others. The confirmation from others gives light to your spiritual giftedness. Sometimes you are having a gift. You may not even be consciously aware of it because you are doing your work for God and for you it is normal. You may not realize that there is something there that other people are seeing. Confirmation from others also gives light to your spiritual giftedness. Other people who see you serving the Lord can identify a spiritual gift in use that you might take for granted or not even recognize. Let us look at the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 5 to 6. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 5 to 6. Verse 5 say, When I recall to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded is also in you. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you to the laying on of my hands. Praise the Lord. We can see here that this young man, Timothy's mother, Lois, and his, and his mother, that is his grandmother Lloyd and his mother Eunice, brought him up in the Lord. They introduced Jesus to him at a very young age. And because this young man was very, very conscientious in receiving what he was taught, retaining what he was taught, and putting it to use, Apostle Paul looked at him, and because he was a man filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, he knew this one is a firebrand for Christ. And it said, I remind you, stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. He wanted Timothy to, Timothy to know that there is something in you, young man, and that thing can be put to use for Christ. There is something in you and that is where confirmation comes. Timothy was, Paul, Apostle Paul was confirming to this young man that there is something in you. The gift of God is in you. Probably several gifts. Look into yourself and you will see it. And you will begin to use it in the mighty name of Jesus. The other aspect is you can carry out a self-test. Many people are afraid to carry out their own test. Many people are afraid to assess themselves in the place of worship, in the place of God where they are working. They are afraid to come out and perform 
you will see them thinking, maybe if I begin to pray in tongues now, uh, they will say, ah, this one that came to church today, today. Look at him trying to show that he knows something. Maybe you are growing in the house of God from being a worker to becoming a minister. And people are making fun of you behind your back. They are saying this one, when did, they, when did he come here? Praise the Lord. It is not for them to make just of you. It is for you to make a self-assessment of yourself. Praise the Lord. There are questions you can ask yourself as pointers to your spiritual gifts. There are questions you can ask yourself, such as, what spiritual activity do I enjoy doing best? What spiritual activity, as a child of God, do I enjoy doing best? Is it in teaching? Is it in giving? And then you will get an answer because you are asking yourself and you know what is in you. You know what is good in you. You know what you do best. Ask yourself, what spiritual activity as you are seated here am I good in? As many of you are sitting here, the Lord has blessed you with gifts. But until you look inwards, that gift will be lying dormant. Another question you can use as a self-test is, what ministry in my life is God blessing? What ministry in my life is God blessing? Praise the Lord. Let me tell you about myself. I began teaching about five or six years ago. And within this period, the Lord has blessed me as a Sunday school teacher. Yes, he has blessed me. And I discovered that this is the work I can do best for Christ. Of course, there are several other things that my competence can match up to. But this is what I love doing, and this is where I receive the blessings of the Lord. Another question you can ask yourself is, what is the Holy Spirit telling or prompting me to do? What is the Holy Spirit telling you to do? What is the Holy Spirit prompting you to do? Is the Holy Spirit prompting you to become an usher? Is the Holy Spirit prompting you to become a counselor? Is the Holy Spirit prompting you to go to the Bible college and train yourself as a, as a pastor? These are questions you can ask yourself. Praise the living Jesus. Now, if I may ask, class, if I may ask you a question. My question is, can you mention the spiritual gifts you have identified in your life since you surrendered your life to Christ? Can you mention the spiritual gifts you have identified in your life since you became born again? This is a safe assessment for yourself, a safe test for yourself. Praise the Lord. And I don't want you to just listen to this question as a rhetorical question. I'm asking you to search your minds, to look in words, go deep into your soul, into your spirit, and see if you can identify that very gift that the Lord planted in your life when you gave your life to Christ. Praise the living Jesus. Now, let us go to the second outline. The second outline is talking about effective use of spiritual gifts. Effective use of spiritual gifts. If we look at the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 6. Ephesians 4 verse 6. Let's look at the book of Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4 verse 7. Ephesians 4 verse 7. Let's see what that place says. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's spirit or Christ's gift. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Now, let us lay emphasis on these points. Effective use of spiritual gifts. Every Christian is given at least a gift at conversion. And that is a fact. I think it is time 
for us to begin to teach new believers that the moment you have given your life to Christ, look into yourself. There is something, a gift that God has given you. Now, that decision to leave sin and cling to Jesus is a wonderful decision that the Lord does not leave it to go unnoticed or unrewarded. The moment you take that bold step, he rewards you with a gift. And we can see that in Ephesians 4, verse 7, where we have just read. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. The moment you surrender to God through Christ. Again, as you manage your well, as you manage your initial gift, and as your ministry begins to expand, when we are talking about ministry, many people will think it is the pastors who are in ministry and so on and so forth. Let me tell you, you are in ministry. Praise the Lord. If you are a sanctuary cleaner, that is your ministry. If you are in any other department of the church, that is where the Lord has called you to be. So, how do you manage your initial gift? And as your ministry begins to expand, and as you begin to grow in the Lord, to work for him more, to move from one step to the next one, how do you manage that initial gift which you had received from him? Because as you manage that first gift that God gave you, definitely, when you ask him for more, later on as you begin to mature in Christ, as you ask him under the direction and promptings of the Holy Spirit, God will surely answer you and even bless you with more gifts. Praise the living Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. As you manage the first gift that you receive from the Holy Spirit at conversion, the next thing is that as you begin to grow, expand in your ministry, be bold through the promptings of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will be knocking at the door of your heart. Son, daughter, it is time for you to move Son, daughter, it is time for you to move up. You have undergone ministerial training. You have been ordained, a min you have been made a minister. You are an altar minister. It's time for you to move forward because I want to use you at even a, more, a bigger forum than where you are operating right now. Probably the Lord is, the Lord's plan for you is to take you to that place where you will be of service to hundreds and thousands of people. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 31. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 31 says, But earnestly desire the best gifts, and yet I know, and yet I show you a more excellent way. But earnestly desire the best gifts. That is what the scriptures are telling us there. You must desire the gifts that are even better than what is in existence in your, in, your, in, your, in, in, in your life right now. You must ask for even more. Because as you mature, many people are looking up to you. They are expecting to see new things. They are expecting to see the move of the power of the Holy Spirit in you. And you must make that conscious attempt to go on. Praise the Lord. Another aspect we can look at is every gifted person has a proper function in the body of Christ. Every gifted person has a proper function in the body of Christ. That is inside the church. As you are gifted by the Lord, there is an assignment he has for you. As you are gifted by the Lord, there is something you must do. As you are gifted by the Lord, you must be of service to the people. Remember what we said at the beginning? That when the Lord gives you his gifts, 
He's not giving you it for you to just retain it. He's giving that gift for you to use it for the people. Praise the Lord. He is giving you that gift so that you can use that gift to edify his own name. So that you can use that gift to move the growth of his work here on earth. As he's giving you that gift, he wants you to be involved in his vineyard. Praise the living Jesus. And we can see in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 20 to 25, that no gift is superior to others, but they have different functions. So let no one deceive you that this believer knows how to speak in tongues and you do not know how to speak in tongues. Yet, the Lord has given you a gift of giving. Do not think that one who is speaking in tongues is better than you. Many people will make you to feel that you are inferior because they will practice spiritual superiority on you. As a child of God, I advise you, I counsel you, don't look at people who puff their shoulders that, ah, I have been in this ministry for 30 years. You just came one year ago. I'm better than you. Listen, children of God, it is not time. It is not old age in the church that matters. But how well connected you are to the Holy Spirit and how devoted you are to serving God. Those are the vessels God is interested in using. Those are the vessels God is interested in using. Praise the living Jesus. We also see that no one believer has all gifts. No one believer has all gifts. So we need one another. While one is having this gift, the other one is having an, another one, we complement each other. Let us quickly look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28 to 31. 28 to 31 says, 28 says, And God has appointed these in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues, 29, are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Verse 30. Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? The answer is no. But earnestly, desire the best gifts. That is what God is saying. It is not everyone that has the, the, the domination of, of every gift. But the Lord apportions those gifts so that children of God will begin to work for the house of God. Each one working, doing his own work, complementing each other. Also, spiritual gifts are given to edify and build up other believers. Every time we talk about edification, what actually is edification? Edification is an act of building up in a spiritual and moral sense. Spiritual improvement through encouragement and instruction of others. So, to edify means to build up other believers. If your work is to edify, to encourage other people. You know, first of all, God will give you the personality that when you are talking to people, they will be interested in listening to you. And listen, children of God, anyone who will have influence on others in an assembly such as this must be someone who is spiritually charismatic. When you are able to reach out to people in a simple way they can understand, you relate to each and every one, not minding their social class. The problem is social stratification causes a lot of damage in the assembly of the saints. But when you are charismatic, praise the Lord, when you are charismatic and you have a sense of doing your job in a way that you attract other believers, brethren, do it. 
Now, spiritual gifts are also given to promote growth, unity, and love. We can see that in Ephesians 4, verse 16. Spiritual gifts are given to promote growth, unity, and love. They are also given to assist in the care of one another. When you have a spiritual gift of the power of intercession and prayer, and you see a brother or a sister who has a challenge, and you stand in the gap for that person, you are caring for that person spiritually. When you are blessed with resources, you have resources at, 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 at your beck and call. You can care for others who are less privileged. And also these gifts are given to glorify God, especially in the ministry of the word. Your gift, singing, sing to the Lord. Teaching, teach in the house of God. Exhortation, exhort to the high heavens. And let the people of God, let the children of God hear you. Now, we can see that when you are blessed with the gift of the Spirit, you can become an oracle of God. Oracle here means speaking the mind, the will, and the wisdom of God. And when he puts a message in you, you have to speak it out. When he uses his mouth to speak into you, you must speak it, you must say it to other people. So we say, as a child of God, have you been making use of your spiritual gifts? As a child of God, have you been making use of your spiritual gifts? To finalize, or to conclude, identify your spiritual giftedness and start making use of it to the glory of God from today. And I pray that the Lord will help you to do so in the mighty name of Jesus. Faithful utilization of a gift brings increased effectiveness in the ministry. But failure to develop a gift curtails ministry. God wants us to work for him. There is, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Are you that one that wants to work for God now? I tell you, you can do it because he has given you that gift. The gift to which you can put to use in his house, even as you are seated here today. He's calling you earnestly and reminding you today that you have been blessed with his gifts. And this is a clarion call. Arise now and make use of those gifts to the glory of God. The Lord will help us to use his gifts to the glory of his name, to his work in his vineyard here on earth in Jesus' mighty name. Let us pray. Father, we thank you because you have spoken to us today. Father, help us to identify our spiritual gifts and put them to use to the glory of your name. In the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit. Amen.